Hello. Well, I have a breakdown today of a DCC machine, that's Digital Compact Cassette. It's a Philips DCC 900, and it was working fine a few weeks ago, but now when I try to play a tape, it keeps dropping out and it's coming and going. I don't believe the problem's mechanical. One of the things I noticed is if you leave a tape playing for long enough, it gets better, to the point that the dropouts are almost acceptable. There's a great video done by Dr. DCC of the DCC Museum, link below, uh, which explains exactly what this problem is. It's dried out capacitors, of course, uh, and he tells us how to take it apart and change those capacitors. Now, I don't have the exact capacitors I need. I've got a lot of them, but uh, there are some 68 microfarad ones, and I'm probably going to have to substitute them for 100 microfarad. Hopefully that'll be okay. I don't have the schematics yet, but I'd, usually that would be okay. But uh, we'll have a look at that later. We'll check what those capacitors are reading. So I've left the temp machine playing now, and it's sort of playing a bit, but uh, it's not very happy. So uh, let's uh, get stuck in. So it's sort of playing this tape at the moment. Let's uh, take that one out. We have a set of capacitors. Right, power it down and take it apart. Interestingly, one of the screws seems to be missing. So uh, I suspect this machine's been apart before. So we have the first of the PCBs that we need to uh, work on. And do that connector so we can take the uh, bottom flexi cable out. So here are our fending capacitors. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. Got 68 microfarad ones there. Some 10 microfarad ones along the top. Four point sevens, and according to the instructions given by the uh, Dr. DCC. I believe these are non-polarised and they have the letter N against them so these two 4.7s are non-polarised so they need to be replaced by non-polarised capacitors I'm going to start by um, measuring the capacitance of the uh, 468s here I see there's a gap left on the board let's check those with my capacitance meter Okay, let's start by taking those off.
Yep, that certainly needed replacing. It's bulged. Right, I've carefully removed all of those and that was very hard because I think the electrolyte has been spilling out of the capacitors making the uh, soldering hard to contact so my normal desoldering methods weren't working very well let's look at these uh, they were all 68 microfarad and they're the ones I'm planning on changing for 100 because that's all I've got let's have a look at these uh, 10 microfarad ones They all appear to be rubbish as well. While I'm here with this, I'll check these 4.7 non-polarized components. That one looks okay. I suspect they're provided by a different company, those. I may not change those. Let's do the least damage possible, I'd say. But these uh, tens need to go. Okay, if I decide I'm going to leave the non-polarized capacitors alone, then uh, that's ready for fitting the new capacitors. I decided to fit surface mount 10 microfarad capacitors into these locations. These were supposed to have 68s, not that one, but these. I only have um, non-surface mount 100 microfarad capacitors, but I've looked at the schematics which were kindly sent to me by the uh, DCC Museum, and uh, I, I'm satisfied that no harm will come fitting 100s where 68s should be. Okay, my master plan of fitting these... Uh, 10 microfarad surface mount capacitors in there has come adrift because these are too large. So that's not going to work. Let's see what else I've got. Aha, they look better. Okay, that's the uh, 10 microfarad capacitors all changed, and I've been under a microscope and checked that they're all making good contact. Right, now for these, which I'm going to replace with 100 microfarad non surface mount. Right, this board is now cleaned up as well, so the situation is we've changed all of these 10 microfarad capacitors, we've changed the 68 uh, surface mount for 100 microfarad uh, conventional, and we've left, I've left, the two non-polarised 4.7 microfarad capacitors alone. You could change them, but the ESR meter says they're perfectly okay, so I'm going to leave them well alone, and uh, let's refit this to the uh, machine. That's the lower flexi cable we fitted. That was quite fiddly. But it looks like it's in straight. Okay, before you refit this PCB, it needs to be fitted in just the right spot. You need to slide that down into a little bracket at the bottom there. OK, 
Okay, the remaining capacitors on the PCB under this bracket. And this is the other end of the flexi cable that we've uh, just reconnected. More capacitors. So there's some tens, a 22, more tens, and a 2.2 non polarized. Let's uh, check that non polarized one. That one appears to be absolutely fine. So again, I'm going to leave that one alone. The non-polarized components do not appear to be the problem. Let's look at this 22, which is next to it. Rubbish. And let's look at these 10s. Okay, let's see. They all appear to be rubbish. Right, so let's get those out. I can see some corrosion going on here, I think. Can't even meter that one, it's so badly corroded. Oh, it stinks up here. It stinks of fish. Right, so I've changed all of these capacitors except the 2.2 microfarad non-polarized one which I think is a different chemistry than the others and I've examined it under a microscope to make sure the soldering is good let's uh, reassemble it Right, I have a few more screws to fit in the front, but I think first we'll test it and see where we are. And we'll know fairly quickly because as it's been powered down, previously it would have taken a very long time to settle down and start actually producing some good sound. So if it does straight away, then we're fixed. Of course, there's always a possibility that some mistake has been made and it won't work at all. Let's uh, see what happens. No cassette, that's correct. Reading, stop. I'm not sure what's going on. Side AB. It's making an odd noise. Is it pinch roll rotating? No. Something's wrong here. Oh, of course, it's that pinch roller. Different pinch rollers for different directions. But something doesn't sound right. Well, I found something. This machine is still not working very well, but it gets much better the more you use it. And that seems to be a thermal problem. That this PCB that's the read-write PCB lives down there underneath the deck. It's rather hard to get to. And I found that if I squirt freezer on that PCB, after some time, 
probably because all the capacitors and stuff are on the other side that I can't get to with the freezer. After some time, it starts dropping out badly. And if I then apply some heat, run my hot air gun at uh, 100 Celsius to that PCB, the dropping out disappears to pretty much zero. Let's just demonstrate that again to confirm that I'm definitely doing that right. We don't want a contact match on the audio, but uh, you go to here if it's basically working. So it has a tape in, it's in play, and it's playing the tape. Find the right volume control. So it's quite a piece of music. And it's dropping out a bit. So let's apply some heat. Being careful not to hit touch anything with this. To that PCB. And see what errors we get then. Still got one then. Well, think about two or three minutes of this heat, and the errors will have stopped. Okay, seems to be playing well now. But is that conclusive? Well, not yet. What would make that more conclusive if I now cool that PCB? It'll take some time to have an effect, partly because I've just warmed it up and partly because the capacitors and most of the circuitry is on the other side of the PCB. So just wait. We go and it's dropping out very badly right completely gone no sound at all back with the heat and the audio comes back it's a quiet piece again but it's playing now and playing without any errors at all. So that's definitely thermal and it's definitely on that PCB. Right. Unfortunately, I've gone and reassembled most of this thing. I'm going to take it all apart again now. Let's take it apart and get that PCB out again. Right, so here's the thing. Is it possible to get to this while it's running? I think it might just about be, with a bit of care. So this is the offending PCB right here. Let's see if we can get you to it. That one. If it doesn't mind being worked sideways... Oh, let's put this bracket back here. That will help, probably. Right, now I can get to nearly all of the PCB in question, including the, the side where most of the components are. I can't take the board out while it's running, though, because there's a flexi cable underneath it, which is quite short. But I can get to most of it. Right, let's see if we can work the deck in this horrible angle. Bear in mind it's got an earthing wire off. See if it'll run, and if it will, then I can squirt freezer on these individual capacitors. Maybe find out if it's a there's still a capacitor problem or some other component. There was one non-polarised capacitor I didn't replace on here. Could it be that? Unlikely, but, you know, worth a try. Um, not happy running sideways for a moment. Let's switch it off. Okay. 
let's tip it over here where I can get to it. I've powered it down doing this just in case something touches something it shouldn't. Now I can really get to these components in here. Right, the sound's not on at the moment. Let's warm it. Make some unpleasant noises. It may not be happy running on its side. Right, now I'm going to freeze these capacitors here. It went when I touch these lower components, these ICs at the bottom. Coming back, which component is it? Try each IC in turn. No, it's not the ICs. Non-polarized capacitor? No. Right, I cooled down the non-polarized capacitors which I'd thought were perfect and I've lost signal warming them up, warm those up again back it comes well that's pretty conclusive I should have changed them power down take this board off again right so our uh, Trouble components are these two, and this area here may be contaminated, it may not be clean enough. So we'll look at all that. All right, I'll look at all that under a microscope. So there's two 4.7 microfarad non polarized 16 volt electrolytic capacitors. And I have here 4.7 non polarized, okay, not surface mount, that's fine. So they can go in those two positions. Look what happens when I test one of these 4.7 microfarad non-polarized capacitors once I've cooled it down a bit. So it's been cooled down with a freezer. That was probably about a minute ago. Let's see what we get now. Oops, my try again. Haha, <laughs> look at that. You expect the value to change a bit, but not that much. Look. Yes, I would say they probably are poor. So I was wrong to trust them earlier. Out they come. It stinks in here. Fish? I was just about to tell you how much it stinks before fishy? we mentioned it. Fishy? Yes, it smells quite Those good. capacitors smell fishy too. They were defective. Right, having replaced those non-polarised capacitors, I've also cleaned the board some more and just dried it with warm air. Let's uh, refit it and see if that's any better. Okay, let's uh, fit a tape. There's reading. It's come back with a track title. Carefully place it on its side. Plug the headphones in. I can see the VU meters working. No, it's still dropping out. I think. Try some freezer in there. Oh, 
Oh. Maybe it's not dropping out. Maybe that was just because it was on its side and it was unhappy. No, it's not. Earlier on when I did this, it dropped out badly. Aha. There was a moment to drop out when I changed side, but that may not be unusual considering the machine's on its side. All right, it's time to reassemble that and try it, I think. Well, I thought it was just about finished and ready to go, and it wasn't. Two problems. One, I found that when it was playing a pre-recorded DCC tape, sometimes, but not always, and only ever in the A direction, it would have errors in the sound. And when I pulled up the error display, I can show you in a moment how you do that, then it would have errors in a cyclical fashion every few seconds. And I noticed when looking at it that those cycles were related to the rotation of the pinch roller, the pinch roller that is used in the A direction. From which we can assume that the machine needs new pinch rollers. And there's another problem. I found that I think the best way to set the azimuth, because one of these screws wasn't tightly done up, one the best way would be to play an analog pre-recorded tape on it and tune for maximum treble. Because the errors you'd get in the digital format you wouldn't notice if you were just a tiny bit out and to get perfection you really need it spot on so that would be great but when I put an analog tape in there was no sound very faint sort of hummy hiss sound which reduced with Dolby selection so that says that uh, there was a fault before the Dolby circuit and I have hopefully solutions to both of those problems Curtis to the uh, DCC Museum, I have Ooh. a brand new DCC tape recording. We'll play with that one later. Two new pinch rollers, and they've kindly also given me a capacitor uh, which I didn't have in my stock, which was one I haven't replaced yet. So hopefully that'll sort the pinch roller problem. And I went on to the DCC uh, forums and Ralph was kind enough to give me a suggestion of where the problem might be for a lack of sound. It may be that uh, I've disturbed some connections um, on the flat cable on the read-write board. So let's uh, get it apart and see what we can find out. Just before I go ahead with using it, this is a reminder of how to get the error readout on this model. doesn't work on the all, all models. Press the stop and play button simultaneously and power up. And it goes into service mode. And I think it's now the time button. You press and cycle it through these different tests. Let me get you so you can see the display better. So... What's the one we want? Main data, all error rate, all error display. That's a display test. I think it's all error display I want. Go play mode. And as long as I read zeros nearly all of the time, then it's basically working very well. But I want to get that even better with the new pinch rollers. But I don't think anybody would complain about that. And now with uh, analog tape, we're not getting any sound. Uh, I think I'm still in um, service mode, so it won't probably like that very much.
Let's take it out of service mode. Let's play. Nothing. And I know this is a pre recorded tape with content on it. Okay, let's take it apart again. The pins 16 to 18 on a read write board where the flat cable connects is right next to 68 microfarad capacitor. That I believe is there. Right, he's saying there could be connection problems from one side of the board to the other near the flexi cable connector. Oh, look at that. That looks quite grim, doesn't it? These and these connections could be part of our problem. One of those appears to be no contact. Okay, having um, done the repairs to the uh, board there. I'm just going to do a sanity check, see that it still plays digital tapes, hope that it plays analog tapes, and then we can change the pinch rollers. Start with a digital tape. That's playing fine. Let's see if it'll play an analog tape now. Alas, still nothing from the analog tape. Change direction, nothing. Well, it's uh, disappointing that we still don't have analog playback. I'll come back to that. I'll have another look at that board. Fortunately, it's the easy one to take out. The one that's in there is really hard. So I'll take out the board again and look for any other possible problems, such as other through-plated holes that have lost contact. But right now, I want to change these pinch rollers. Now, I gather this one's easy. And this one's a little harder because you've got to remove this screw and take this cover off. And that's a very small screw there. That was very hard to undo that screw. Very tight. Didn't enjoy that at all. Okay, so there's uh, some mechanism behind that one. Now then, where's the lever we have to press to take these pinch rollers off? Okay, I see the lever. It's at the bottom of the base there, and it's pushing that way. No, it doesn't want to release. Let's try this side first. Okay, that side's come off okay. You can see a little mark I put on there. That's because I was watching that go round 
when I was listening for the errors and I realised that that was uh, the rotation speed. So clearly that pinch roller. Oh, look, there's a dink in the pinch roller there, if you can see that. Just there, there's a, a line. So that's the pinch roller that most needed replacement, but I would obviously replace them both. Let's try once more to release this side. Well, that's a nuisance. Okay, come back to that in a moment. I'm going to change the pinch roller in here, and maybe we can learn if it's easy enough that it can be done in situ. Here's our new pinch rollers. Push the pin out. Let's refit that one. I'll refit the top cover. And this truly hideous screw. Okay, that's the uh, difficult one really, but this is still well and truly stuck. So do we reckon we can, we've can? we got enough room to push the pin out and change the pinch roll in situ? <sighs> Didn't want to, but since I can't seem to extract the pinch roll, I may have no choice. Okay, I got the pin out, maybe I can do this. New pinch roller. Right, pin in from the top. That looked good. Okay, let's try it. What have I done wrong? <laughs> Silly. Forgot to push that down. One side's playing okay. I had a momentary glitch when I immediately after I switched side. Let's um, do an error count using the, uh, the buttons that we learned earlier. Service mode. Sorry you can't see this at the moment. the wall reading zeros in the B direction and all reading zeros in the A direction with the occasional one ok 
Okay. So we've done the main important work now, but we still have this problem that there's no analog playback. Just confirm that again. Nothing. Take it out of service mode. Definitely nothing. So we'll go back to that board, which is easy to get to, and have a look for any more through plated problems. Well, it's not going to play analog tapes. I think there's um, damage to some of the through plating holes on the uh, read write PCB, and if I attempt to fix them, there's a hazard that I'm going to make things worse. Right now it plays DCC tapes properly, and that's what I need it for. So sometimes you just have to be pragmatic about these things and say, you know, that's as far as we're going to get. It does play beautifully, it's got the new pinch rollers installed, it really is a lovely piece of kit, so we're going to leave it at that. Uh, and a big thank you to Ralph at the DCC Museum, and they've also provided this brand new, well, 2018 DCC release. So uh, I'm going to enjoy uh, listening to that later. I also have this DCC 300 model uh, machine to play with. I've started working on this already. The fault with this one is the opposite of the DCC 900. This one will play analog tapes, but not digital ones. So what could be wrong with that? In the meantime, please remember to like, share and especially subscribe. And uh, I'll do lots more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.